What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, in today's video, let's take a moment to talk about loops. So I've got a really basic loop pulled up here. Let me solo this out. Let's kind of zoom into selection and have a quick listen. Just an instance of contact with Spitfire chamber strings. And one thing to note over here is that in addition to this sound already having kind of a baked in reverb, I am also adding some reverb with the plate 140 over here. So this would be a dry. Okay, so let's talk about rendering these loops and working with these loops, manipulating these loops, whether you're doing this in a production or you're making some sample packs that you wanna sell, anything like that. I think it's a good thing to be able to work with loops, especially with the way today's music industry is going. So let me close my browser here for a second. Let's talk about a couple different ways that we can do this. Well, the, my biggest issue I have with most loops, not all of them, but a lot of them actually, is that if we take a look at this and I was to render this down into an audio file, let's have a listen to how this sounds. Okay, so, so far so good. It starts off nice and clean. But watch what happens here when we get to the end. Okay, so a couple things. Obviously, we've got a click and a pop. That's something that we can take care of with fades. But the bigger issue is that any decay that's happening on this run here at the very end, by the time you get back to the very beginning of the file, it's completely dry and it doesn't sound right. So that's my biggest issue and it actually happens on quite a lot of loops. So to combat this, we've got a couple different approaches. The easiest one is to quite simply just double this up and then if I was to use mix down selection with both of these over here, if we listen now, we still have a nice clean start but listen to this section over here. Now as it plays through, I'm gonna change my cycle range so that it loops back. So we've got a little bit of a click there. That's not a huge deal, that's something that we can take care of, but if we listen to the very front end, and then this section, notice how we have that dissonance there? That's actually because the decay from the end of this melody. So in terms of working contextually with loop, that actually makes sense, and especially because so many loops these days are so doused with effects and reverb. Now, rather than sitting here and editing this out and crossfading all the audio files and everything, I want to show you a really cool hack that you can do using either Sample One XT or Presence XT. Uh, you'd have to have Presence XT editor to do it in Presence. So let's take a look at how to do it in Sample One. So we've got this mix down done, and it kind of represents everything that we need. We have the very beginning, which is clean. And then at this part, we have this kind of this section here, which has the decay of the end. So we can use this to loop. So let me go ahead and open up sample one for a moment and let's take this file and let's just drag and drop this in here. Now the idea is pretty simple. If you think about it, if we take a look at how this plays, this is essentially what we want to happen. We want it to start clean and then we want it to go all the way through. But then when it comes back to the end, we actually want it to loop back to the middle part. Wouldn't that be perfect if we could do that and then smooth this out? Well, there's a way that we can do this with a sampler. Actually, a lot of samplers will allow you to do this. Um, I'm gonna just take a look at this one over here though. So for the trigger mode, I wanna click normal. I want this to be playing normally. Uh, your release isn't that important until you essentially release your key. But the important thing is a loop mode. I'm going to set this to sustain. Now, when you set the loop mode, you have the ability to set the actual loop point different from the duration of the in point, the out point of the sample. Now, in order to make this work, I'm actually going to use a little bit of a cheat. So let's just cut this, We'll go all the way back to the beginning and let's paste this. Now, I want to navigate to bar five. And if I scroll down here, I'm going to change this to samples and I'm going to steal the number here, 329, 143. I'm working at 48K, 24-bit, and the very beginning of my timeline 
would represent zeros across the board. So then I know that four bars in, 329, 143. So we can kind of get that number and we can just plug this in, 329, 143. Now we know that our exact endpoint that we've set in samples is exactly at the beat one of bar five in terms of the duration of this loop. So that's the first part. Now, if we have a listen to this, we can do so just by clicking down C3, for example. As we hold it down, watch what happens. It's gonna pass through this loop point. Now what happens is when it gets to the end of the loop, it's gonna come back to the beginning and it's gonna continuously loop. And that'll happen for the whole entire duration in terms of how long you're holding down the key. Okay. So the in point, the out point are good, but there's one thing I want to take care of, and that is we need a little bit of a fade. Now the general rule here is apply as little of amount of fade as possible just to get rid of the click. Um, I'm going to go with one millisecond, so we're at 48K, so let's go 48. That'll give us a one millisecond fade, if my math is right. And let's do that again. This time I'm going to drag the in point though, so we don't have to listen to the whole front section. Let's do that. Now pay attention as we get to the end of the loop and it comes back to the beginning. I didn't hear any click. Let's go one more time. Okay, so I think that's more than good enough. Now we're gonna drag this back and essentially that's all there is to it. We've got the full duration for the in point, the out point. We found where bar five is sitting, which is the second pass of the loop. And then we've added a crossfade. We went with 48 over here, and we borrowed this number by just seeing where the samples were at bar five in our timeline. So that's pretty much it. Now, the only thing you have to do besides that is essentially you need to create a blank MIDI event, and then we're just drawing C3 right across the board for the whole entire duration. Now watch what happens when we play from here. Let's mute this and play. So it's passing through, it's going to do the first four bars, and then it's going to go to the second half. Now when it comes to the very end, it's coming back. And the reason that sounds smooth is because we have the decay of these notes in the beginning of this section. And as long as this is drawn out, then we will have this playing continuously. Now, this is all well and good, but at the end of the day, nobody really wants to have one continuous MIDI note in their productions. So from here, you've got a ton of different options. You can uh, print stems and bring them back in. You could print the track. Uh, you could just bounce the selection. I like using mix down selection. It's a really quick and easy way to do it. And we're gonna create an audio version of this whole entire file. Now this is named mix down by default. We could call this, for example, string loop and now we have string loop it's an audio file we no longer have to worry about the midi instrument but you can hear that this is nice and clean now now we're going to our second pass and when this comes back and repeats that's where we have the crossfade so that sounds really really smooth to me i'm not hearing anything no clicks or pops So that's using a sampler and looping sustain mode and in points, out points, and crossfades to get seamless second cycle loop passes directly from within Studio One. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.